I just want to take a moment and talk about flow. Have you ever had a moment where you felt at peace with the world? Nope. <laughs> it, it's coming when you do a site survey. You have that zen-like experience. A moment where you've lost all self-conscious thought. Right? That's what surfers experience when they have a perfect harmony, balancing the forces of the water on their board, uh, hurling through the barrel of a wave. Now, I like to imagine that surfers would be great Wi-Fi designers because they're constantly looking for that perfect wave, studying how things are flowing, hitting the beach. Now, they're looking for that one perfect wave, whereas us as Wi-Fi designers, we're looking for a whole plethora of consistent waves uh, regularly occurring through the day. So my name's Troy Martin, uh, as Mac mentioned. You can find me on the socials, on Twitter, at Troy Mart. Uh, I'm based in Canada. I like to surf the frozen snow. Uh, which I need to head back tomorrow because we're in the middle of Snowgeddon, uh, lots of snow landing on the mountains. Uh, you can find my contact information at the QR code there. But I want to talk about some of the survey methods that uh, are available to us through the EchoHouse software. Uh, my presentation is going to focus on the, the data that we can collect from the stop and go and from the continuous survey, but there's also autopilot and GPS and the just go surveys, which are basically extensions of continuous it's just a different way for you to click or mark your position on the floor plan. Okay. Now, Matt and Max showed us some cool features that are available within the Ekhal product suite uh, that are dependent on your iPad or iOS type device. Uh, so I put together a blog where you can access via this QR code that provides some suggestions on which model of iOS device would best fit your needs. The, the too long, uh, didn't read uh, answer here, is you want, uh, what I'd recommend is finding an iOS device that supports LiDAR, the Pencil 2, and has built-in GPS. And with that, you'll have access to all the features on all the different types of uh, surveys that you can perform. But I want to focus the, my talk on performing an active survey. And I, I want to avoid the question, should I do an active survey, should I not? Let's consider, based on reasons, we need to implement an active or perform an active survey. Right, as part of the business reasons for being on site. And during a passive survey, which you always, always have to do a passive survey, that's a mandatory requirement, a list of the data points or some of the data points you can collect, uh, you see on the slide there. But in an active survey, that's where we get information like round trip time, packet loss, jitter, and throughput. So I want to focus on these metrics. And so we take a look at some of the spectrum that's available, uh, massive chunk uh, for uh, a lot of the regions in the Americas. But in EU, it's a little bit less spectrum on six gigahertz, right? And when we scan with a sidekick, I want to start thinking about how much data we're collecting as we go through uh, moving to different spots on the floor. How long does it take to collect that data? The sidekick will sit, each one of the four Wi-Fi NICs in your sidekick too, will sit on a channel for 105 milliseconds before hopping to the next channel. So if you want to scan all of that spectrum in the 2.4, 5, and 6 gigahertz band, it takes a little bit of time to collect data points across all those channels, right? Because at any given spot on the floor, you're not necessarily aware of what channel the nearest AP or APs are operating on. Now, if we look in AI Pro at the default configuration of the channels that we'd scan, uh, it's pretty straightforward on 2.4 and 5. But in AI Pro, if you guys weren't aware, when you scan 6 gigahertz, it only scans the PSC channels, right? Not all of the six gigahertz channels, it's just the PSCs, right? Now, if you were to perform a survey using your iOS device, by default, you have access to all the channels, but it, again, it only scans the PSCs on six gigahertz, right? So if you wanted to get visibility into all of the six gigahertz channels, you would have to manually configure which channels are configured on six gigs. Right, because there could be rogue APs, uh, neighbors on the floors above and below you, across the street. Uh, you may want to get visibility to all of those channels. But by default, it's just the PSCs. Right? So again, as I mentioned, I want to focus on active surveys. And when you configure Ekahau to perform active surveys, there's two different modes you can run it in. Right? We can run a ping test, where we collect round trip uh, time data, or we can run a throughput test. Right, when we can run that in TCP or UDP mode, and we can run that in send or receive mode. Right, so lots of different options that we can run this in. Now, when we configure the timer for stop and go, we do this through the preferences page. 
right? So there's a little value here where we define how long we're gonna wait and collect data for that stop and go period. And by default, it's 5,000 milliseconds. When we configure the throughput survey, there's a cycle time that we configure which tells Ekahau how long to run an iperf instance for, right? So how long we're gonna collect that data for. Now, if we start looking at the data that we collected, I have a little uh, map that I set up here. And what I did is I used area notes to mark different spots on my floor. So that's one of the tricks that I like to use. Uh, sometimes if I show up on sites, uh, I'll walk around and I'll use areas to mark ceiling types. Are they flush ceiling tiles, recessed ceiling tiles, or ceilings that I can't mount an access point to? So I'll make notes using areas. Uh, here, I'm making notes uh, for areas. And the areas in purple are where I did a TCP test. So either in stop and go mode or in um, doing a throughput test. Uh, the areas in green are a UDP-based test. Uh, the area in yellow was just a stop and go test. And the area in red or pink or rose, whatever you want to call that color, uh, that's a survey that was done using an iOS device. And for iOS devices, we, we were dependent on using ping as our throughput test. So it's always pinging the default gateway. And then what I did is I built a custom report in Ekahau. Right, so you can grab a picture of this to see what the code looks like to generate the report with the data that I'll be providing. Uh, but basically, it's a tabular formatted output that gives me results of my packet loss jitter uh, throughput from various points on the screen. And so the port, when it runs, we get a little table of all the outputs that we can see here. And across the top, we get little numbers uh, that we can reference based on the line, numbers, line uh, numbers in the table of where we were at that spot on the floor when we ran that 10 second or whatever timed uh, iperf test that we were trying to run. So we start looking at the data. When we run a TCP test, right, here's an example that runs from the report. And if I leave the default settings of 10 seconds to run a full uh, sequence of an iperf test, if I was to walk a continuous survey of 55 seconds, which is not an even increment of 10 seconds, I lose that last five seconds of data, right? So when you're walking and doing continuous surveys, it'd be a good practice to keep that number relatively small, so 10 seconds is fairly reasonable, but stop and start your survey on 10 second increments, right? Otherwise, you lose that little chunk of data. If I set that timer to be 20 seconds, I would lose 20 seconds of the iperf test. Now, all of my passive data being collected, that's all, all preserved and you're all good there. But from a throughput analysis, uh, a little bit of that data is, uh, is gone. If I do a UDP test, right, that's where I get packet loss and jitter. So you may have noticed in the previous slide that packet loss and jitter are not available when running a TCP test. Right? If that's a data that's critical to your analysis and it's part of the business requirements that you collect it with uh, your, your measuring devices, you want to make sure you run in UDP mode uh, so that you get packet loss and jitter information. And ping test is the only test that gives you that round trip time. Right? So now if we start looking at the data visualizations that we can see, if we measure data rate, this visualization shows us a reflection of the information revealed in the beacon frames that we're capturing, right? But data rate's not really the, the truth, right? It's not uh, the actual uh, indication of the speeds and feeds that we'd get. Throughput's more indicative of that. And so we can see, based across the top, whereas running a TCP test or as doing a ping test on my iOS device, I don't have throughput data from those spots on the floor, right? So if I wanted that data, I'd be running to run a UDP mode-based test. If I look at round trip time, packet loss, and jitter, you can see based on the different survey, uh, or based uh, the, yeah, on the, the throughput modes that I use, I get different data that's collected. All right, so if I did a round trip time, uh, that's where I was doing my ping test. Uh, my packet loss and jitter is where I was doing UDP-based tests. Right, so if that's important to collect, you wanna make sure you do that. Now, on the final slide with jitter, uh, you do see visualization. There is a heat map generated for the packet loss. Um, but interestingly, it always shows zero milliseconds, right? So sometimes you need to dig a little bit deeper into the network. Either you've designed one of the best networks that are out there and you have zero milliseconds of, uh, of jitter, right? Or you forgot to flip the switch to run in UDP mode to make sure you're capturing the actual jitter information. So here's a little summary table uh, indicating which data is collected based on the various throughput surveys that you can perform. All right, with a few uh, uh, little caveats there. Uh, and it's not, say, uh, square root of two. It should be a little check mark there. 
I can see that. Uh, so to summarize all of this, uh, my recommendations for performing active surveys. Okay. First, I think you should try as much as you can to convince people that you should just do a passive survey. Right? I think that's a much better approach. Uh, the data that you get is actionable data that you can use uh, and you can gain a lot of insights for it. Um, if you are forced to go down the path of looking at an active survey, throw some numbers out there, right, to give people a sense of what's actually going on. I would charge or position that as to cost seven times more, right? The downside of this and the point I think you can really emphasize is the data you collect isn't seven times more valuable, but it takes more time to be on site because you'd want to perhaps walk in UDP mode, both transmit and receive, TCP mode, transmit and receive, uh, ping mode to get your round trip time, and the warehouse that Mac and Mac just presented about, how long would it take to walk that warehouse if you had to do that five times over? Right, so we're charging, charging a, lot more, uh, a lot more time for that. Right, where you have to walk in all these different modes. Uh, and if you have to pick one, I would suggest always running a UDP-based test, because uh, that's where you get the most amount of data, but you may want to measure it in both, both directions. Right? And then if you want to keep walking, if you uh, are interested in going through uh, regular shoes uh, to change your shoes with the season, uh, wear out your soles, you might want to do a lot of walking so you can do that. Right? So it's just a lot of walking, a lot of wearing out your shoes. Right? Uh, and then the last little trick here, in order to perform these active surveys correctly, you want to be able to walk all the way around the access point, which means you want to prevent yourself from roaming before you've collected data at all those points around the access point. So in addition to all that walking, just a floor plan to cover the distance, you have to walk the same spots on the floor several times over as you turn off the SSID from one AP to another to avoid roaming. So it becomes a, a, a much more complicated process. But again, sometimes business requires that you perform an active survey, right? So I'm not saying it's the best method or that you'd always do it, but if you were to go down the active survey path, this is something you want to consider when you're collecting your data. And I just want to end before we take our, our, the break uh, that's coming up here. Uh, remember to find your flow, right? Some people do that on a surfboard, on the water, others in the Canadian Rockies, or you get in a zen-like experience walking up and down the aisles of a warehouse, performing your survey, excited about the data that you'll be able to analyze.